the main objective of this session uh, is to discuss an economic analysis of financial structure. While carrying out uh, this discussion, uh, it will help us to understand and inform how our financial structure is designed to promote economic efficiency. So, look at this figure, it shows the sources of external funds for non-financial businesses, a comparison of the United States with Germany, Japan, Canada and US. You can see it from uh, in the figure that these are the uh, major sources, four major sources of external funds for non-financial businesses that the firms are given here. So, from this you can see that the four major sources of external funds, one is bank loans, other one is uh, non-bank loans and bonds and stock. This is the data from 1970 to 2000. So, you can see this is the percentage of total uh, external fund for the firms. So, what are the main inference here? You can see that for example, for US, for the US, um, you can see that non-bank loans uh, occupy a larger share. But for Germany, Japan, Canada, you can see that these are the bank loans, bank loans occupy uh, larger share. Before we discuss further about uh, this figure, uh, let us also make some more observation uh, that means for example, stocks, stocks you can see that actually the share uh, is actually very less. Uh, for example, US the um, share for external fund for the firm is only 11 percentage uh, and for, uh, for, for instance in Japan is going to be only 5 percentage. And even as compared to bonds, bonds even occupy 32 percentage for the US but uh, shares occupy only 11 percentage. That means actually what we normally think that most of us think that the major sources of external funds for firms are mainly stocks is not true. Actually, they rely on the other sources uh, including bonds, bank loans and non-bank loans. And we also need to highlight one of the issue here, an important note here. There is no, we should not make a direct comparison uh, between uh, bonds share and stock share because when a share of stock is issued, uh, it raises funds permanently, right. Whereas when a bond is issued, uh, it raises funds only temporarily until they are paid back. So, in that way, a direct interpretation of this figure may, may be misleading. So, anyway, uh, let us move further to discuss uh, this uh, figure. Uh, what are the major uh, inferences from these figures? So, let us look into major uh, inferences, major insights from this figure. So, what you can see that uh, an important observation here is that in contrast to what we normally think that stocks are the major sources, but this figure clearly shows that stocks are not the most important sources uh, of external financing for businesses. So, the question here is that why is the stock market less important than other sources of financing? This is an important question that we need to answer. What we will do uh, in this session and subsequent sessions? First, we will interpret this figure, uh, try to inference, make some inference from this and then we will raise some question and then we will try to answer in subsequent discussion in subsequent sessions. Okay. So, why is the stock market less important than other sources of economy, other sources of financing? We will answer it uh, by discussing appropriate theoretical theories uh, behind it and also then we will relate it with the empirical aspects. Then going to fact number 2 from this figure, you can see that issuing marketable debt and equity securities is not the primary way in which businesses finance their operation. So, that means a debt and equity securities is not the primary way in which businesses finance their operation. So, this is not the primary way. So, why do not businesses use marketable securities, bonds and stock, which we had the instrument we discussed in the previous session uh, more elaborately. So, our question here is that why do not businesses use marketable securities, why do not they borrow from the market and pay rate of interest. Uh, 
and that is in in the any way that for example issuing bonds is a kind of direct finance that means they are selling directly in the market and raising without using uh, any financial intermediaries why don't they, why don't they do it and similarly why don't they issue more ipos and raise funds uh, instead why do they use other options so the question here is why don't businesses use uh, marketable securities more extensively to finance their activities and coming to fact number 3 you can see that indirect finance is many times more important than uh, direct finance so that means indirect finance means raising finance through financial intermediaries instead of directly buying from the market through issuing bonds and uh, stocks so then the question here is that why are financial intermediaries and indirect finances so important in finance market so one more thing you need to remember that when for example when the firms are buying through financial intermediaries actually the borrowing cost increases right so and even you know that when they are buying through banks or any other financial intermediaries obviously they also need to pay the the cost for the operating cost transaction cost for the uh, firms the intermediaries and plus their profits as well so that means uh, it is costly for uh, firms to buy through the indirect finance even though why are financial intermediaries and indirect finance so important in financial markets even though it is expensive and in re- however in recent years uh, if you observe more about this market that uh, we can observe that in recent years uh, indirect finance has been declining in importance why is this happening what is happening over time why the uh, indirect finance has been declining in recent years then moving to fact number 4 financial intermediaries particularly banks you can see here banks uh, source actually you can see for example in germany uh, it is uh, 76 percentage and uh, japan is 78 percentage of firms their external financing is through uh, bank loans so the question is the fact here is that financial intermediaries um, particularly firms are the most important source of external funds used to finance uh, businesses even within financial intermediaries is not only the banks actually occupy larger share not the not bank loans for example uh, loans from pension funds or loans from um, insurance companies etc non banking financial intermediaries etc so then the question is what what we are going to answer in the subsequent sessions uh, is that what makes banks so important to the working of the financial system then although banks remain important we can also observe if you go through the data corresponding the about the sources of external funds if you visit the data from uh, federal reserve and imf and other sources you can also see that although banks remain important their share of external funds for business has been declining in recent years and what's driving their decline why is so then some more facts we can see that the financial system is among the most heavily regulated sectors of the economy this is not from the figure anyway so however that also related to the financial structure throughout the world the financial system is among the most heavily regulated sectors of the economy even if you read the financial dailies in india and the us and other western countries and rest of the world rest of the uh, globe you can see that the financial system you can see that there are lots of regulation are being done so regulations are being done to control the financial system then the question here is that uh, why are financial market uh, so extensively regulated throughout the world what drives what uh, makes the policy makers to uh, may, le- that leading to uh, uh, the controlling or regulating the financial sector so extensively then another fact is that only large well established corporations how easy access to security securities market to finance their activities 
That means if you observe, if well-established firm, for example, Coca-Cola, Microsoft, Google, if they want to raise funds, it is much, much easier for them to raise funds. You might have also observed that when well-established companies issue IPOs, you can see that these have been such companies' IPOs have been oversubscribed. So why do only large, uh, well-known corporation find it easier to raise uh, funds in securities markets? Then seventh fact that related to the financial structure throughout the world, collateral is a prevalent feature of debt contracts for both households and businesses. So the, again, we raise the question here, why is collateral such, as, such an important feature of debt market? So before that, let's see what is collateral mean. Uh, collateral is a property that is pledged to the lender to guarantee payment if the borrower is unable to make debt payments. Collateralized debt, also known as secured debt, in contrast it with the unsecured debt such as credit card debt, which is not collateralized, is the predominant form of household debt and is widely used in business borrowing as well. So the example of collateralized uh, debt is the mortgage, the housing loan, uh, vehicle loans, uh, etc. So the question here is why is collateral such an important feature of debt contract? The eighth one, the last one, debt contracts are extremely complicated legal documents that place substantial restrictive covenants uh, on borrowers. And even if you get a loan from a, a bank or a lender, you cannot easily use it. There are lots of restrictive covenants that you need to follow uh, when you, you use these funds. So the contracts are extremely complicated legal documents. So again, the question here is that why are uh, debt contracts so complex uh, and restrictive? So, in order to answer these questions, uh, which we will be doing in the subsequent session, as I mentioned, let us discuss the economics behind uh, the reason for this. So, one of the reasons that is leading to most of these factors, the fact uh, while, while answering this question, is the issue of asymmetric information in the market. So, we have seen in one of the previous session, we said that one of the principles in the finance market, we said that uh, information is an important uh, variable in the finance market. However, we are going to see that uh, the finance market is more of uh, filled with asymmetric information, uh, which would eventually lead to market failures. So let us discuss this concept, what is meant by asymmetric information and what is meant by market failures in the financial markets. So coming to information, uh, let us first make information into two category, two group. One is perfect information and the other one is imperfect information. So in economics, we, when we study the perfect competitive market, one of our assumption is that there is perfect information, but that is really, that is actually in fact unrealistic assumption because in the world there is nothing called perfect information about any variable, uh, this is very, that is very hard to attain. So one of the assumption you might have studied in economics that the basic economics in the perfect competitive market, uh, both consumers and producers having perfect information about, uh, about the quality of the product, uh, about the prices and about the market demand and supply conditions, right? Oh, so, if for example, about the prices, they have perfect information, Ab about the quality of the product, they have perfect information. So, we are actually uh, disregard uh, this very fact, that means there is nothing called perfect information. Uh, most of the market actually, the real world, it is called imperfect information. That means about the any variable, economic variable, uh, the information with the, for the, uh, with the uh, different stakeholders are imperfect con uh, information. Within imperfect information, even if we take that there is perfect information and even within imperfect, inf with, between perfect and imperfect information, if, even within the both of these, uh, we are going to say that suppose if there are two stakeholders between these two two stakeholders suppose buyers and sellers here in this case we are going to see that 
uh, with regard to a particular economic variable for example the quality of the product for example debt bond bond instrument or stock uh, that is a particular uh, instrument uh, one of the economic variable uh, we see that there is imperfect information uh, about the quality of the bond for example when a bond is issued the buyer of this bond you know that buyer of the bond has limited information uh, imperfect information about the uh, quality of the that bond that, that means the about the financial condition of the firm who issued uh, this bond so similarly uh, we can see that uh, the firm who issued um, this bond also having imperfect information uh, because they the, the way how the firms uh, f future prospects and also uh, they will be having um, imperfect information but within imperfect information what we are going to introduce that we are introducing another concept called a related concept called asymmetric information that means about for example even about the bond itself the bond issued by the seller uh, the supplier of the bond and uh, demanded by the moreover uh, we are going to say that there is asymmetric information even if the information is imperfect so asymmetric information means asymmetric information asymmetry deals with the study of decisions in transaction where one party has more or better information than the other that means parties on the opposite side of a transaction have different amounts of information so for example in this case the bond which we meant, just mentioned here uh, we can see that the issuer of the bond uh, that the supplier of bond is having more information about the uh, quality of this bond that the about the financial condition of this firm and future prospects of the investment that they are going to make as compared to the borrower or the demanders of this bond so here what we say that even if there is imperfect information but within imperfect information you can see that one party is having more information uh, than the other one so in this the examples for this one uh, the asymmetry the asymmetric information here is that borrowers know their risk of default than lendix so the the default risk the borrowers of fund that the issuer of bond in the market they know more about the default risk of this bond as compared to the demanders of bond that is the lenders in the market so similarly that is one example so another example is that patients know their risk so suppose someone buying health insurance product uh, we know that uh, the prospective insurer those who is buying insurance products know more about the probability or possibility of hospitalization or the health risk of the uh, of, of him or her than an insurance companies so the case here is that patients know uh, relatively uh, we don't know only know absolutely they know their uh, risk relatively know more about their risk as compared to insurance companies so similarly doctors understand the proper treatments so but the patients may not so about each economic variable for example here the first one we told about the default risk that the economic variable second one is about the health risk the health risk of the prospective insurers uh, then the third one is about the treatment quality of the treatment so all about all this variable what we have seen here is that there is uh, actually we need to really highlight this fact uh, information asymmetry doesn't mean that there is perfect information even within imperfect information i see that uh, patients know their risk but still patient really do not know all uh, in depth or absolutely they don't know uh, about their risk what are the health condition they are having uh, what are the health risk they are having but as compared to insurance companies uh, they are having more information right they have more information similarly doctors they know the property about the understand the treatments still there is uh, still uh, lack of information not a complete knowledge they are having still as compared to patients we can say that a uh, doctor saw we understand the proper treatments but patients may not so this is uh, called asymmetric information so what we are going to see uh, in the sub in this uh, session and then the subsequent discussion that means uh, finance market is more with uh, more filled with asymmetric information issues 
that actually creating lots of issues uh, that actually affect the efficient working of financial markets. So, because of this, uh, what is going to happen that because of asymmetric information, we are going to see that there is going to be market failure, market will not work efficiently, the demand and supply side of the market and the determination of the prices and market clearing uh, will not happen so easily and smoothly, the, smoothly because of information asymmetry. One of the kind of information asymmetry uh, is called adverse selection, selection problem. selection uh, problem. This issue has been first uh, introduced by or uh, discussed uh, thoroughly by uh, George Akerlof uh, who is the Nobel laureate, uh, his famous work uh, about market for lemons. So using another example of market for used cars, he explained, he discussed what is meant by how information asymmetry uh, in the used car market uh, leads to selection bias and how eventually uh, the used car markets uh, finally uh, collapse that means market failure so the market failure happens so by using the markets for used car uh, he took an assumption actually this is a generalization of the fact uh, what he did, did that um, here in the market for used car, uh, so in the suppose someone wants to sell used car, you know that uh, the quality issue, why someone is selling a car. There may be a number of reasons, maybe one may be he really want to sell him, he has a financial trouble or maybe he or she think that there is some uh, quality issue with the car and maybe something with the engine or any other other issues that others may not be knowing, the potential buyers may not be knowing. So, as compared to the buyers, with our assumption here is that sellers know the exact, exact quality of the cars they sell as compared to the buyers. Uh, the potential buyers. So, buyers can only identify the quality by purchasing the good and after starting use, uh, after start using the car, then only they will come to know about the quality of the car, whether it is really good car or bad car. So, in this here, obviously you know that buyers will be, that means they cannot get, your, you cannot get your dollar back if you buy a bad car. So, you cannot sell it back, right, you, you cannot give it back, there is an assumption here. So, let us see in this case, suppose uh, taking the case of information asymmetry uh, in a car market, let us see how uh, this car market works. So, to may discuss this case, uh, this idea, let us make the th things very clear, uh, make there are two types of cars, we assume that there are high quality and low quality car. Uh, for the high quality car, we call it peach and low quality car, we use we call it lemon. Obviously, you know that there is nothing called that um, the discrete, that um, uh, binary kind of classification is not possible, is not the right way, that means high and low. You know that there is actually starting from low, then gradually increasing medium quality, then high medium quality, then high quality, super high quality is possible, but for the sake of simplicity and to manage our discussion, so let us take the, this example. There are only two groups of car, one is high quality and the other one is low quality car. See, the high quality cars in our example are worth $20,000, then the low quality cars are worth uh, $2,000. And also suppose that people know that in the population of used cars that 50% uh, are of high quality. That is also again another assumption, already a strong unrealistic assumption, uh, one that is not likely satisfied. Even if we take this assumption. Let us see how this market is going to work, how this uh, used car market is going to work. So, the what is the expected price of this car? So, we have seen that uh, high quality car prices, uh, expected pri the high quality car price is uh, 20,000, low quality cars price is 2,000 and the probability we already seen that um, that is the probability here, the probability for uh, used car, the, the high quality car is 50 percentage, 0 0.5 and here uh, low quality car is also um, 0 0.5. So, in this uh, market, how much are they willing to pay? Obviously, you know that uh, the way we answer, the expected price, the average price of this car is going to be 
this one uh, 0 0.5 times 20k uh, this plus and 0 0.5 uh, 2k uh, finally the expected price of uh, car in this market is going to be uh, dollar 11000 right this is the expected price now let's see how uh, what we what is going to be the actual price based on the demand and supply conditions uh, what is going to be the price of car in this used car market we are going to see that people are willing to pay based on this calculation this much information people are willing to pay 11 k dollar 11000 for an automobile so the question is uh, would uh, 11000 be the equilibrium price in this used car market what we are going to see that this is not going to happen why because who is willing to sell an automobile at 11k who is willing to sell at this price you see the high quality owner uh, he or she the owner of the high quality car uh, thinks that um, the price of his car is uh, 20000 and the low quality owner knows that the price of his car is uh, his or her car is uh, 2000 only so why should so in this market uh, we, since the willingness to pay the market equilibrium price is going to be 11k why would the owner of the high quality car who thinks that um, the value of his or her car is going is 20k why would uh, they sell it at a price of 11k and obviously you know that the high the owner of the high quality car uh, won't enter the won't sell it in the market and then this market it will be represented by only low quality owner because uh, low quality owner uh, his price he they, he or she think that he the price value is only 2000 but the expected price is uh, 11000 right so only low quality owner uh, enters the market suppose you are a buyer you pay 11k for an auto and you get a lemon what would you do so obviously the buyers are also not that stupid right so they are not they also apply their uh, rationality they understand that uh, this market is only consist of low quality car and they won't be willing to pay the equilibrium price is 11k but they won't be willing to pay this equilibrium price of 11k so eventually what will happen so you can see that in this market uh, low quality cars will drive out high quality car so finally the equilibrium price will fall to 2000 that means this market uh, this will only consist of only low quality cars in the markets so what we are going to see that this car market is uh, collapse actually this is a kind of uh, market failure here uh, this market is only consist of uh, low quality car uh, they are kind of a selection bias and we are going to call this problem as addo selection that means only uh, low quality car this market is only with a low quality car ideally it should be both car and in the next session um, we will continue this discussion we will discuss uh, more about uh, this selection issue and then we will apply in different forms of uh, financial market how selection problem uh, arises thank you